Rectangular coordinate system. Parts of the coordinate plane and order pairs. And an order pair is an X and a Y. The horizontal axis is known as the X axis. And the vertical axis is known as the Y axis. And where the two lines cross or intersect is a point, and that point is known as our origin. Now, the coordinate plane is broken down into quadrants. Our first quadrant is known as the x value, y value are positive. So the first quadrant, if you notice the x-axis, the values are positive, And on the y-axis, when you go up, the values are positive. So in the first quadrant, my x's and y's are positive values. The second quadrant, and we go counterclockwise, is going to have a negative x value because look at the negative that look at the x axis my x values are negative and the y values are positive it's going up in the third quadrant both my x values and y values are negative when you look at the axis you see my my x axis has negative values my y axis has negative values and then lastly the fourth quadrant my x values are positive and my y values are negative. So when we want to graph or plot an order pair or a point, we're going to always start at the x value. So you look at the x coordinate and you're going to look for it on the coordinate plane. You always want to start at the origin and because the x value in this case is a positive 5, I'm moving to where x is a positive 5. Now you're not plotting the point there. You have to find the y value from your x value. So I go to where x is 5 and then I find the y value and it's a negative 2. And because it's negative 2, I'm going down to where y is negative 2 and I plot the point. So my 5, negative 2 would be on the coordinate plane where it's located in this picture. When we're asked to complete an order pair, you're using evaluation to solve for the missing variable. So when you have an order pair, remember an order pair is always an x value first and then a y value. So in this case, I'm given a variable in the x spot, and I'm given a value for y. So to find the variable x, I have to substitute the y that's given into the equation. So when I substitute it in, be careful because we have a minus y, which is going to make that a double negative because the value given is a negative 6. So that double negative will change to a plus, and then I have a two-step equation. So in a two-step equation, you're going to subtract that 6 first, and then you'll divide through by 3. And for this order pair, my x value would be 2 for this equation. So again, another example, I'm given my x value now, and I have to find my y value. So I'm going to take the value that's given for x, I'm going to substitute it into the x value of the equation, and then I'm going to find my y. So 3 times 0 is 0, so I'm going to be left with a negative y equals 12, and I need to divide through by a negative 1, and I'm going to get my y value equals a negative 12. Pause and try. So in this case, you're given your y values negative 4. You evaluate. You have a two-step equation. You're going to add 12, then divide through by 2, and you end up with your x value equals 9. Pause and try. So you're going to substitute the 0 in for x. 2 times 0 will go away. You're left with 3y equals 6. You divide through by 3, and you get y equals 2. So one way of graphing an equation is to use a table of values. And what a table of values is, it's made up of two columns, and it lists x values and their corresponding y values. So let's do an example. 
Now notice here that the equation uses f of x equals 2x minus 1. Well, f of x is a notation for functions. And function notation uses f of x, but it also is equivalent to the variable y. So it's good to get familiar with f of x and f of x also being a y value. So when I'm doing a table of values, instead of having f of x, I'm going to use y. And my x values, I'm going to, I'm going to choose my own x values. Now when I choose my x values, I like to choose a negative x value, I like to choose 0, and I like to choose 1 so that I know what's happening on all sides of the coordinate plane. You want to know what's happening on the negative side of the x-axis, you want to know what's happening at the origin, and you want to know what's happening on the positive side of the x-axis. So what you're going to do with your x values is you're going to substitute it in to the equation given, and you're going to find your y value. So I started off with x negative 1. I'm plugging it into the 2x minus 1. So I have 2 times a negative 1 minus 1. And that's going to be a negative 2 minus 1, which will give me a negative 3. And then I'm going to plug in 0 into the function. And I'm going to have 2 times 0 minus 1, which would be a negative 1. And then I'm going to plug in that positive 1, and I'm going to evaluate, and I'm going to get 2 minus 1 will be 1. So I chose the value of x, and then I'm finding what y would be for that value of x. Now that I have my table of values filled out, I can create my order pairs. And remember, the order pairs are the points that you will be plotting on the coordinate plane. And it's made up of the first value is your x, and the second value is your y. So you're going to take these order pairs, and you're going to plot it on the coordinate plane. And you notice here that I have a negative 1, negative 3. That's my first point, and I plotted the point. And then I had 0, negative 1, that's my second point that I plotted, and 1, 1, and I plotted my third point. Once you have your points plotted, now you're just going to draw the graph, and in this case it ends up being a line. So this is using a coordinate plane, or using a table of values to graph an equation. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have gotten negative 1, 4, 0, 1, 1, negative 2 as your order pairs. You plot the order pairs, and then you draw the line. So when we talk about equations, one type of equation is called standard form. And what standard form is, is when you have x plus y equals some value c. And the coefficients of x and y and c are integers. So an example here of standard form would look similar to this. 2x plus 3y equals 6. This is standard form. Now some definitions. X-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now what I need you to understand about the x-axis is for any order pair that has a point on the x-axis, well all the y values on the x-axis would equal zero. So to find the x-intercept in an equation, you'll set y equal to zero and then solve for x. So your order pair would have an x value because it's on the x-axis, and our y value will be 0. So the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So if it's on the y-axis, every value of x on the y-axis is equal to 0. So when you're trying to find the y-intercept in an equation, you'll set x equal to 0 and solve for y. So the order pair would have 0 in the x spot 
and a y value that you found. So let's do an example here. We're going to find our x-intercept and our y-intercept for this equation 2x minus 3y equals 12. So to find my x-intercept, remember the y value for my x-intercept will equal 0. So I'm going to have an ordered pair where I'm going to have an x value and the y value will equal 0. So I'm going to substitute 0 into the equation and I'm going to solve for y. I'm sorry, substitute So let's do an example. We want to find the x and the y intercept. So to find the x intercept, I'm going to start with finding the x intercept. The order pair is going to end up being x comma 0. So remember, 0 is in the y spot. So you're going to do the evaluation by substituting in 0 into the equation. So I substitute 0 into this equation that 2x minus 3y equals 12. I plug 0 into y, and I'm going to have 2x minus 3 times 0 equals 12, and 3 times 0 is 0. So I'm left with 2x equals 12, and now I can solve for x. I divide through by 2, and I end up with my x value is 6. Now be very careful because you can't leave your answer as x equals 6. You have to write it as an ordered pair because when we're talking about intercepts, they are a point that will be plotted. And in this case, because it's the x-intercept, it will be plotted on the x-axis. So it's very important that you write your answer as an ordered pair. Now when we talk about the y-intercept, again, the x value will be 0, and you will find your y value. So I'm going to plug in 0 for the x in the equation. I'm going to evaluate, and 2 times 0 is 0, so I'm left with a negative 3y equals 12. And now to solve for y, I divide through by that negative 3, and I get 12, or y equals a negative 4. And just like the x-intercept, the y-intercept needs to be written as an order pair. And the x value is 0 for the y-intercept, so you're going to end up with 0, comma, negative 4. These are the intercepts for this equation, 2x minus 3y equals 12. Pause and try. So again, for the x-intercept, I plug in 0 for y, and I end up having a negative 2x equals a negative 8, and I get parentheses 4 comma 0 as the order pair. My y-intercept, I plug in 0 for x, I'm left with the negative y equals a negative 8, and I solve for y, I get y equals a positive 8, and the order pair would be 0 comma 8. So please remember to write your solution, your intercepts, as order pairs. What you'll be doing with these intercepts is you will be graphing the equation. So when you're graphing an equation of a line, you can find the x and y intercepts, and then you're going to plot the x and y intercepts on the coordinate plane. And remember, the x-intercept will be on the x-axis. Your y-intercept will be on the y-axis and then you'll draw the line. So let's see what this looks like. So we have this 2x minus 3y equals 12, and in the previous example, we found the x and the y intercept to be 0, or 6, 0 for my x-intercept, and my y-intercept was 0, negative 4. I'm going to take these two intercepts, and I'm going to plot them on the coordinate plane. Remember, the, the x-intercept will be on the x-axis, which will be 6, 0. My y-intercept will be on the y-axis, which is that 0, negative 4. Make sure you're plotting them on the right axis. And then you can draw your line, and you graph the equation of the line using your x and y-intercepts. Pause and try. So again, you're finding your x-intercept, it should be 6, 0, and your y-intercept is 0, 8. 
when you plot these points, make sure you're plotting them in the right position. Your x-intercept is at 6, your y-intercept is at 8, and you graph the line.